And SpaceX cargo ship is heading to the International Space Station. Among other things, it's carrying the first ever 3D printer to station. And joining me now for more on the project is Nikki Werkheiser. She's a project manager for NASA 3D printer and Zero G. Nikki, thank you so much for joining us. Um, why does the International Space Station need a 3D printer? At NASA, um, in real-time operations, we really have to be dependent on launching every single thing that we might need on orbit from the ground. So having the capability to have an on-demand machine shop uh, to, to generate whatever parts you might need, whether that be for uh, replacement parts that are lost or broken, or if you have scientific experiments where you use consumables, so you need more parts, having that on-demand capability is a real game-changer. So it's for creating parts in space. When the 3D printer reaches orbit, does it have a mission in particular? Absolutely. Um, this first uh, experiment is actually considered a technology demonstration. Uh, the International Space Station is the only platform available where we can actually test these technologies for further out exploration missions. It's also the only place where we can have uh, microgravity to see how the process, the actual additive manufacturing process, works in microgravity and to confirm that it works the same way that it does on the ground. So the first parts that we print will be things like uh, coupons and tensile specimens that we will return to the ground uh, for detailed ground analysis and comparison to our control samples. So the first mission is a test mission, but it's tricky doing anything in microgravity. Yeah. So how does a 3D printer work in space in that kind of environment? Well, we've actually uh, tested it on the parabolic flights uh, where we get very short durations of microgravity. Uh, we only get 20 to 30 second spurts for 40 parabolas or so. But we have found that all the data from those flights shows that it actually works very similarly to the way it does on the ground. Um, of course, there are some considerations when designing it uh, for space operations, such as ease of use and safety protocol. Uh, but we believe that the, the technical process will actually be very similar. But as I mentioned, it is a technology demonstration, so we won't be able to confirm that mm -hmm. until we, we, we print our first part. Yeah, but if this technology works, astronauts would be able to resupply themselves in space, which could be just an incredible thing to know happening up there. But an application closer to home, I mean, what benefits could a 3D printer in space bring to us here on Earth? That's a very good question. Um, actually, the same type of things that we uh, desire for uh, space applications, things like portability and really ease of operation, uh, remote operations, and having high quality, repeatable, um, high resolution parts are the same things that the consumers on the ground are interested in for home or school or professional use. Now, a, a 3D printer is being sent to the International Space Station. Its first mission is a test mission. Hopefully one day soon, it'll be able to print out handy tools up in orbit. But Nikki, in the far, far future, I'm almost talking like in a sci-fi realm, in the far future, what could it do one day? I mean, could a 3D printer in space be able to build out an entire habitat? Absolutely, and that's what I think we're most excited about. Uh, we have an in-space manufacturing vision as part of NASA, and it's a roadmap that really uh, captures all the technologies that we would need and require to have sustainable living on further out destinations like Mars. Um, so we do have technologies today. It sounds like science fiction, but it's actually science fact that even today we can print larger structures, um, things like small buildings or radiation shielding, landing pads, um, so we do have additive construction, and the idea there would be to be able to use that, the in-situ resources, so the Martian regolith, for example, um, to be able to build what we need. The, the real bottom line is that uh, we won't be able to use the model that we use today for further out exploration missions. We won't be able to launch every single thing that we might ever need uh, with us. So we'll have to have sustainable technologies that allow uh, the, the travelers, the astronauts, to be able to adapt and use whatever resources are available to them for, for living and operations. So in the event an astronaut forgets something, guess what? Yeah. Fire up the 3D printer, you can print it out yourself. Thank you, Absolutely. Professor NASA. Thank you so much for joining us. And here's wishing you and the team the very best of luck as you test out this exciting new technology. Take care.